All right, this is from my utmost for his highest. Um, clouds and darkness. <clears throat> Excuse me. Taken from uh, Psalms 97. A portion of verse 2. Clouds and darkness are round about him. A man who has not been born of the Spirit of God will tell you that the teachings of Jesus are simple. <clears throat> But when you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, you find clouds and darkness are around about him. When we come into close contact with the teachings of Jesus Christ, we have our first insight into this aspect of things. The only possibility <coughs> excuse me. The only possibility of understanding the teachings of Jesus is by the light of the Spirit of God on the inside. If we have never had the experience of taking our commonplace religious shoes off, our commonplace religious feet, and getting rid of all the undue familiarities with which we approach God, it is questionable whether we have ever stood in his presence. <clears throat> I believe that to be true. The people who are flippant and familiar are those who have never yet been introduced to Jesus Christ. After the amazing delight and liberty of realizing what Jesus Christ does comes the impenetrable darkness of realizing who he is. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, not the words I have spoken. The words that I speak unto you. Does that mean, I mean, they continue to speak? Nothing? <laughs> You're sitting there being so quiet. I'm processing <clears throat> what you said. I, I Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, not the words I have spoken. They are spirit and they are life. The Bible has been so many words to us, clouds and darkness, then all of a sudden the words become spirit and life because Jesus re-speaks them to us in a particular condition. That is why God speaks to us, not by visions and dreams, <clears throat> but by words. When a man gets to God, it is by the most simple way of words. <clears throat> now, I do believe we do have visions and dreams. Mm -hmm. you know, um, and I'm not so sure that Oswald Chambers means that God doesn't deal with people in dreams, you know, but... Right. Um, well, I think, I think the way I take this is because I was just thinking about this. The Word of God is living. It is. And <clears throat> it continually speaks to our situation. It speaks to our desire of revelation of Him. When we desire more of Him, we can read that passage that we've read 800 times, but it's not until our heart is open to hear what He has to really say that we then understand. Wow. <laughs> the yeah. application is in... Yeah is presented to us at the you know at the time of need or the time of understanding that God has for us. Yeah, you know, we've heard <clears throat> lots of different preachings, obviously, over the course of the, the years. We've heard several I know we've heard several different preachings on the same scriptural verse mm -hmm. or verses. Um, you know, many many applications. One interpretation, many applications. Um, 
So yeah, God's you know, the word of God is a living. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, um, the words that I speak <clears throat> unto you. Hang on, just for as a disclaimer, that does not mean a new revelation that is not there. That means no. the revelations that God holds within the Word, mm-hmm. because there are new. The revelation might be new to us. Yeah, yeah. But it is a, the same revelation that God intended there to be, mm. boys. Mm-hmm. Um, and I put out that out there for our, all of our cessationist friends who, who will take that context, the a new revelation out of context, to say, well, then you're adding to the word. The word adds to us. Amen. Yeah, that's good. good. Mm. That's it. I'm done for the year. <laughs> you started off with a bang and January third. I'm good. <laughs> I have fulfilled. <laughs> the, um, the words that I speak unto you, not the words I have spoken. They are spirit and they are life. Um, they're just, just how, how the, the word reveals. It, it just keeps revealing to us. As long as we're seeking um, truth. Yeah, I was, re- I was reading out of Acts the other day. Of course, that's the book I'm reading out of right now. And I don't remember what chapter. It seems like it was somewhere between 14 and 18. <clears throat> but Paul brought scripture forth to, you know, that's what he was doing, as he was going around bringing forth the word to people that had not heard it yet. Mm-hmm. And... Yep. Um, then he would bring it back to people that already heard it <laughs> to make sure that they heard it, you know, didn't add or take away from it. But yep. he brought forth the word to a group of people and they received it. They received the word. They were baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. But the scripture points out that afterwards they continued to seek the scripture to confirm what they had heard. Mm-hmm. You know, it, was, it wasn't that they were questioning, it was that, that they were putting the word deep into their heart. You know, and where, of course, where did they find the scriptures? In the Old Testament prophecy of Christ. But yep. um, I, that that jumped out to me. It was, sorry, I had to have mm-hmm. your face there. Um, as being profound, that, you know, they were confirming the words which they heard through the word things they hadn't seen yet in the word these were obviously people that jews that were you know would have been in the scripture before right um right i just found that fascinating and applicable to this discussion Um. that was going to come alive to them in the word they were going to get a new revelation in the word the one that they had heard Mm -hmm. (laughs) keep it wrapping mom you know what did we do when we heard through the brother years ago about, you know, who Jesus was, an infilling of the Holy Ghost and baptism. We went to the Word. Yep. We'd seen the Word before and looked at it and went, huh? We'd read for hours and hours. And, and then, the, as the Word says, you know, you can't see unless God shows you, unless yep. God reveals. Yep. And so that's why Scripture often is blank yep. at one moment. Yep. And then revol- revolutionary, rev- revealing at another. Yeah, and it should be like that every time we read. Mm-hmm. Every time we read the no. Bible, we should, <clears throat> because there's something new there. Um, there's always, always something God's wanting to, to reveal to us. If we want it. Always. Um, now, if we're, if we're always reading the same scripture over and over and over, year after year, the same scripture, then not that God doesn't continue to reveal, but we're not going to keep growing if we're right. reading the same thing over and over and over. Um, and there's a whole book there. Well, there's, 
But yep. is it okay if you read that verse? But when you read other verses, you still read that verse. Sure. Well, sure, I'm sure, sure. <coughs> yeah. Now, lots of we have lots of favorite verses that we, that we read over and over and over. We need to expound and add to yep. with additional verses. Yep. We need to we need to understand the importance of knowing how to study the Word of God. So you have a cookbook, but if you only ever use one recipe, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, you're yep. just full of it today. Aren't he you? is. Try man. making donuts out of a breadstick recipe. Check off 2023. Get <laughs> <laughs> in the schedule. It's not that. You know, I don't feel God hides Himself from us, Mm-mm. but we do have to seek. You know, we we've got to seek, and well, we've yeah. got a desire to know Him. Mm. J- again, we we say this all the time. Despite what we've been taught, despite what we think we know, we have to have a willing heart to go to the Scripture to say, God. Show me show what, me I, what I'm truth. missing. Show me something that draws me deeper into understanding of you. Show me if there's something in my belief system that is not in line with your scripture. Show me through your scripture. Yeah, I don't know if, uh, you know, I don't know, but do, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I, do, do people think like that? Or are we... Um, or are we pretty much set in our ways? You know, this this is the way it is. I think. I uh, think we you know, my parents were like we, this. My grandparents know, you know. were like this. My children are like this. Flag, flag, um, 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 You know, this please. is you know whatever uh, religion. Dom, uh, I was going to say domination. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever. Um, doctrine. doctrine. This is the way it is. Um, but I think we have to, you know, seek truth and get our put our own as as hard as as, as it is. Put our own preconceived ideas aside and you know just seek God for truth. And, um, he promises this, if we do that, you know. He will show us. Mm. And then all the things that conflicted in the Word, all the things that were confusing in the Word, no longer are confusing or conflicting. Mm. You know, he's, as we know, He's not a God of confusion. Um, or split personalities. Mm. Um, you know, we just... Uh, uh, I know I say it over and over and over, just... You know, just seeking him and his truth. It's try to keep our own preconceived ideas and let let the word of God, you know, really speak to us. We might be surprised in what he reveals. So. Yeah, I'm going to say this too because it's, it's something that's becoming painfully, I say painfully aware, it's something that I'm becoming more aware of. A lot of people are in certain belief systems because it lines up with their personalities. And that is so dangerous oh, yeah. because then you will tune out God and his truth. Mm-hmm. Because if if you're prone to be at this disposition and this this religion lines up and it, it feeds that part of your personality, then you're going to adhere to it regardless. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. And... We need to be careful of the dangers of that because that can keep us stuck in a religion and not a relationship. Yep. Even when we think, well, you know, it is a relationship. Right. Something that aligns too much with yourself. <laughs> yeah, if it's not uncomfortable at all. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's let's wrap this one up. Um Well, I'll just say real quick. You know, it is it is true, truly, and until we are baptized with the Holy Ghost, you know the there, there's when we are baptized with the Holy Ghost, that the Word does come alive. Mm-hmm. You know, it does come alive. Spirit, definitely. It, it definitely quickens us to definitely not 
<laughs> not all understanding or anything like that, but it does bring, um, understanding. bring an understanding. I think Buckley did, 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 did say to lead you into all understanding. Mm -hmm. So it's a process Simi. that obviously we will never reach all in this life. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. Um, but until we, I, I, I believe, and you and I can testify that until we are, until we are baptized with the Holy Ghost, um, it just didn't make sense. You know, it, I guess like he said here, <clears throat> uh, the teachings of Christ, uh, the, the teachings of Jesus are simple. Um, I don't know if we would use the word simple in our speech today, but um, I would say now with the Holy Ghost, the teachings of Jesus are easier to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not as complicated as they were. Um, no, and we can, we can, <clears throat> and they are yes. Allowing the, the Holy Ghost to, <clears throat> excuse me, to, to lead us into all truth. It's, so, so let's, let's pray. Father, we love and praise you this morning. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. And Father, we just uh, pray, Father, that you would just uh, continue to, to reveal yourself to us through your word, Lord. Father, we pray that um, each one of us would you know, work on our relationship with you, Father, to, to know you better, to, to get closer to you, Lord. Father, you've been so, so good to this family. We just thank you so much for your goodness, Father. Lord, we give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. In your most high name we pray. Amen. Amen.